M. Hightower. I'm Rachel Ann Goodman. It is Thursday, Talk of the Bay, where we talk about local issues, things that affect our lives. Wasn't that a wonderful interview? I just really enjoyed talking to those people from Afghanistan. And our community is such an amazing place because not only do we care about our people, but we care about the land that we live on, the land that has been inhabited for many, many centuries, and more recently by people who of European descent who settled here, and then later people of all different countries coming here and living on the land and relating to the land and sometimes abusing the land. One of the ways we try to help the land is through various laws that might give money toward resurrecting damage that we've caused. For example, overpumping pumping of aquifers. Here to talk about an initiative that will most likely be on the ballot in 2024 that's aimed directly at recovering lands that have been damaged in Santa Cruz County is Sarah Newkirk. She is the CEO or Executive Director of the Land Trust of Santa Cruz County, and she joins me in studio with her squid hat on. Thank you, Rachel. I'm proud to wear a squid hat. It, you rock it, I have to say. i got to take one more picture because that is just the perfect look. So, <laughs> I wish people could see it, but we will post it on Facebook. So check our Facebook page out at K-Squid. Um, Sarah, so there's an initiative. Is it now gathering signatures at this time? We are gathering signatures even as we speak. And I hope that if you meet uh, one of our signature gatherers in the field, that you will be kind enough to learn everything you can about the initiative and go ahead and sign it. And it's got a long name and it has an ambitious goal. Why don't you... Tell us its long name first, and then we'll say, you can tell us what it would do if it passes. Sure. The name of the measure is the Santa Cruz County Safe Drinking Water, Clean Beaches, Wildfire Risk Reduction, and Wildlife Protection Act. Pretty much fixing all the broken parts. That's the hope. Or, yeah. or making headway toward fixing the, the broken parts. Yeah. So let's talk about waterways first. Um, I mentioned overpumping of aquifers. What would this do to prevent that? continuation of this overdraft of our groundwater. So the, the foundational notion on which the measure is designed is that the land base has such an important role to play in providing all of these incredibly valuable services that our communities really rely on. The land base has an incredibly important role to play in um, providing safe drinking water and water uh, to provide for our magnificent agricultural community. The land base has a critically important role to play in reducing wildfire risk. Uh, that is well-managed lands are, are excellent at playing these roles and they're well documented and scientifically founded. Um, in addition to the roles in which we're maybe more familiar as wildlife habitat, as recreational open space, as farms and gardens, um, I think we everybody in our community has a really tight connection with the land. And what this measure will do is recognize that lands that are well cared for and well stewarded will provide those values and those benefits for our community on in perpetuity. Um, but if we're unable to care for our land base, it's it's going to cease to function in, in those incredibly valuable ways. Let's talk about the connection between the land that was burned and the land that was flooded. There's two recent disasters that this initiative would somehow start to repair in some way. Can you talk about the fires and floods and how this initiative might play into recovery efforts in those areas of Pajaro and Santa Cruz Mountains? Sure. Let's start with the fire. Um, the fire uh, was incredibly tragic. However, we live in an ecosystem that's a fire-adapted ecosystem. So I think uh, some people have trouble reconciling those two things. Um, and the way to think about it is that in, in the past, we had numerous low-level fires that would burn... Uh, excess vegetation, excess fuel out of our forests and keep that fuel le level low. Um, but because we've had a policy of excluding fire of all kinds from our forests, we've had a tremendous buildup, and this is over, over decades and centuries, a tremendous buildup in fuel. And 
right? And so this is what I mean when I say well-managed lands are actually really capable of providing that risk reduction function. Uh, if we're able to bring those fuel loads down through prescribed burning or just strictly through vegetation management. Meaning that will, like cutting brush? <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, chipping. That, chipping and, mm -hmm. and some, some level of, um, even some level of, of harvest. Will now, actually... are we talking about public lands or individual properties? Cause yes, a lot of the to Santa, both. Both, because Santa Cruz Mountains is probably owned a lot by private people. What's wonderful about the way this measure is designed is that it invests in ourselves. It invests that in, in, in entities that already exist. So um, money will go to the county parks to help manage the lands that they are in control of. Money will go to the cities, the municipalities, so that they can manage lands that they're in control of. And money will be available for uh, private not-for-profits or other other entities that manage private lands for the public benefit. Uh, and so those entities will be able to apply for funding under this measure so that we can um, provide these uh, land management services that are really the core, uh, the core thing that this act is aiming to do. What about individual homeowners? Not so much, because we're out in the, un I'm in the unincorporated part of the county with that isn't really overseen by any entity except the county. Uh, for individuals, I think that the, the trick will be to, to bring the issues that you're concerned with to some, some private NGO. So for example, in a lot of the unincorporated areas are represented by a fire safe council or by a fire wise community or by uh, the Resources Conservation District is another entity that's specifically provided for um, in this act. So there are individuals are not eligible under under the act, but there are ways of getting connected with entities that are. That's good to know. And there's an increasing amount of public land there, um, not quite open to the public, all of it, but there are the Vicente Redwoods, the San Vicente Redwoods, San Vicente property. Redwoods. Um, Cachoni Coast Dairy someday will be open to the public. Who knows when? That's an editorial comment on my part. <laughs> They've been promising access forever, ever since they put it aside. But that's a huge swath of land that's managed. Who's running that these days? It's the biggest piece of uh, property in Santa Cruz County, and it's, it's managed by four not-for-profits, the Peninsula Open Space Trust, the Semper Virens Fund, the Save the Redwoods League, and last but not least, the Land Trust of Santa Cruz County. How do you all like agree on anything? <laughs> That's a lot of cooks. It, it's a, we are incredibly well aligned in our goals for the property, um, right. and uh, you know I think that and 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 the pro that property is actually again specifically provided for in this act as the biggest piece of property in Santa Cruz County. It should be, but it also has a very significant role again in reducing fire risk. Um, it is an incredibly important source, a, a, a watershed source of water for the city of Davenport. Um, you know, an incredible resource for um, a lot of the areas in our community. In case um, people are thinking, you know, why don't you just put aside this land and just leave it alone? Nature did fine without us. Why should we manage anything? I've heard people mention these kind of ideas. What would you say to someone who's like, why do we need the money to manage land? Just leave it alone. It'll eventually come into balance. Is that uh, true? I think if people are willing to live with the risk of catastrophic wildfire and catastrophic flooding, maybe that's true. But the truth is that we've been managing these uh, lands. And when I say we, I mean the original inhabitants of these lands have been actively managing these lands for millennia before European settlers came here, before the policy of strict fire exclusion, uh, the indigenous people that occupied these lands were, were, were burning them. They were doing effective, effectively indigenous cultural practices that um, maintained these lands and stewarded them. Are we worried that sometimes these controlled burns get out of control? <laughs> Uh, that's always a worry, and I think we're getting we're getting better at at performing them. We've got more burn bosses that are trained up and capable of doing them. Um, the state of California has been investing substantial resources in uh, creating, um, uh, you know, a, a, a prescribed fire community of practice that is uh, incredibly competent. So, 
this initiative is gathering signatures. It needs a certain number to get on the ballot. How many does it need? It needs roughly 10,000 signatures to get on the ballot. Um, We'll be collecting 16,000 signatures because some of the signatures always get thrown out. And this is going to be for Santa Cruz County only. Yes. And it will be on, um, is it the November or March ballot of 2024? The November 2024 ballot. Okay, so the same year that we'll be voting on a president, we'll vote for our own water and forest management bill or initiative. It's a citizen's initiative. It's a citizen's initiative. I guess it depends on how many other initiatives are competing. That's always an interesting um, calculus to make when you put it on and, you know, how who's going to be opposing it. I know that property owners sometimes oppose any tax because they're already paying for a lot of things. What would you say to a property owner about why this is a good investment? How much would the average person pay? Every property owner will pay a flat rate of $87 per parcel. And what I would say to them is that this is a very small investment and a very important outcome. Um, This is a very small investment in the long-term viability of all of the property around Santa Cruz County. So for the cost of less than your Netflix subscription, um, you'll be getting a year of additional stewardship and management, uh, the flood risk reduction, the clean water, clean beaches, um, well-maintained parks and open spaces, wildlife habitat, all for the low, low price of $87 a year per parcel. Will um, plastic pollution be any part of that? You said clean beaches, and I was reminded of just recently driving to the Bay Area on 880 and just seeing trash, plastic trash lining the freeways. And I wasn't sure why, but it seems to have gotten way worse, the whole pollution problem, that the littering, which ends up on our beach. So is that part of it, too? Absolutely. And groups like Save Our Shores, groups like the Trash Talkers in the South County areas um, are going to be able to apply for funds under this under this act and, and, and really be able to contribute to their programming. It's exactly the kind of work that we're really looking to support. And how many millions of dollars will this raise for these programs? It'll raise roughly $7.5 million in a year in total. And of that, 40% will be in a single stream grant funding program that will be that eligible nonprofits will be able to apply to um, in order to support their programming where it meets clean water, fire safety, wildlife habitat, and um, and and, uh, flood and rec- recreational <laughs> yeah, flood control, all, all of the values that the act is designed to deliver. And who will oversee the fund? Um, the fund will be overseen by a citizen's oversight advisory board. Each of the county supervisors will have a couple of appointees to put on the advisory board, and the cities will also have representatives on it. But these will be citizens. This is a citizen's initiative, and so the um, the administration of the act has to be overseen by the citizens and accountable to the citizens. The grant program will be co-managed by County Parks and OR3, uh, two county departments. I think OR3 is the Office of, I want to say, Risk Resilience and Re- Risk Recovery and Resilience, I believe. Um, and so it really has that climate resilience um, uh, uh, bent to it. It's important that we are pairing our land managers with uh, climate resilience planning. And so those, those are the two entities that will oversee the grant program. We didn't talk yet about flood control, and I understand they have fast-tracked the levy fix uh, or the the rebuilding that would permanently protect Pajaro from more than a 100-year flood, but there's money in this that would just cover repairs because they have to do that really like in the next few years before the big rebuild happens. Is that correct? What, what this will do is really invest in the floodplain itself, right? The, 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 the greater degree to which the floodplain is active and that the river is able to, um, to flood into habitat as opposed to up against the levee, uh, putting pressure on the levee, um, the, the, the more we activate that floodplain and allow those floodwaters to spread, 
on land that isn't going to be damaged by it, the less pressure the uh, levees will experience upstream where they're protecting communities. And so this act will have a, a tremendous role to play in providing funding to um, manage those floodplains so that they can absorb those floodwaters and reduce risk. Sounds like a great plan. You know, um, I don't think I've interviewed you before since you took the reins of the Land Trust of Santa Cruz County. So I should congratulate you and ask you to talk about it a little, if you don't mind uh, switching gears just in the last 10 minutes and talking about the Land Trust, because um, not everybody knows what the Land Trust is or what it does. They might have heard of it, but they're not always sure who you are. So um, maybe you can shed a little light on that. I'm happy to. Uh, The Land Trust of Santa Cruz County, um, our mission is to protect care for and connect the vibrant natural and working lands that are essential for people in our county to people and nature to thrive together for generations to come. And we uh, have over the years of our, we've been in existence for 45 years um, and we've protected thousands of acres of land in Santa Cruz County um, through both fee acquisitions, meaning we just are outright owners of the land and through conservation easements in which we have um, a relationship with a landowner to sort of co-manage the land. We own a couple thousand acres of conservation easements, you know, primarily in the Pajaro Valley. And, um, and my, my staff team is 25 magnificent individuals uh, who are absolutely passionate about the county and absolutely passionate about, about the conservation work that we're doing together. Um, and they are, uh, they range from uh, stewardship staff that are actually out there literally on the ground taking care of uh, the resources that we're protecting to public access staff who go out and maintain the trails um, and, and put in interpretive signs and make the uh, access to these wonderful uh, private lands for the public benefit. Um, but our programmatic areas are uh, fourfold. The first is wildlife habitat, and that's oh, that's been, I think, the reason that the land trust was born in the first place. It was fear that we were going to overdevelop uh, Santa Cruz County and that there wouldn't be any space for wildlife habitat. Um, and so, and that we're still incredibly involved in that. In particular, um, recently we've recognized that uh, just protecting isolated islands of habitat throughout Santa Cruz County isn't enough. We have to connect them to one another. And so we've been building wildlife corridors. Uh, the underpass under Highway 17 is something that we've done together with Caltrans and a number of other partners. We'll be building another one over Highway 101 in San Benito County. Um, so wildlife connectivity is a, is a pretty big focus of ours with climate change. But our second programmatic area is agriculture. And we primarily spent uh, time and resources primarily uh, pr- protecting prime agricultural lands from conversion to subdivisions and, and development and so forth. We've recently recognized that with climate change, a lot of the agricultural land that we've worked to protect may become less productive over time as it becomes more frequently flooded or more frequently prone to drought. There's a number of climate impacts on agricultural lands. And so our, we've, we've expanded our focus to beyond prime agricultural land to marginal land that may be able to be retired from production and converted back into habitat. A lot of the agricultural land started as habitat, was converted to ag. It's incredibly productive and, and incredibly important to the economy of our county, uh, to our public health. Um, but we, there's, there's not a lot of point in continuing to farm land that's no longer productive, and we are creating opportunities for that land to um, become something else. Um, the third focal area really is public access. And um, we've been delivering public access through uh, a number of our properties, the Burn Mill Iron Forest, uh, the Glenwood Preserve, the Moore Creek Preserve, 
Um, the San Vicente Redwoods, we've re recently opened up eight miles of trails up there. Um, incredible recreational opportunities. And in the next five years, we'll be turning our attention to South County, where there's, there's less public access open space. And we'll be opening up our Watsonville Slough Farm uh, to a community harvest trails project um, within the next, the next handful of years. And so that's incredibly exciting. And then the last programmatic area really is increasing public investment in conservation and in land stewardship. And that's what this act is about, um, is making sure that we have the local public resources in a dedicated and sustained way uh, to invest in taking good care of the land that we've already protected. That's a pretty big uh, remit that you've got for your organization. And, and like you said, there's 25 people working on these things. Um, thank goodness. I was particularly taken with the idea that there are pumas crossing under Highway 17 instead of getting run over and killed because I heard the males have to disperse. They can't stay near dad or dad will kill them so they have to go somewhere else and that somewhere else was on the other side of 17 and they had to cross it so now there's this underpass do you have a wildlife camera under there we do and if you go to our website you'll be able to see some documentation we haven't caught up we haven't caught on camera a puma yet but we've seen a bobcat uh, we've seen um, the deer have practically moved in. Um, in fact, there, there's imagery of a doe and some of her fawns uh, coming through and then lying down and taking a rest. And where the deer go, the pumas will eventually go. Um, what's really exciting is that, again, our next wildlife crossing will be uh, across 101. We're hoping across 101 from our Rocks Ranch property in San Benito County. And the researchers that have been documenting wildlife use of Rocks Ranch, uh, where, where that wildlife crossing will be, have documented, we think, four individual pumas, which is a lot for, um, you know, pumas are very territorial. As you said, the, when, when you have uh, male juveniles, they have to disperse to get away from dad. Um, but there are at least four individual mountain lions in Rocks Ranch right now, kind of waiting to get across the highway. Um, and so we're really excited to, to be getting on to our next wildlife crossing. These are all really uh, hopeful success stories in a s series of news stories that have been incredibly, increasingly depressing where it comes to not only species loss, but habitat loss and extinction of species. Uh, Elizabeth Colbert's book, you know, The Sixth Mass Extinction, really documents the place we're in where we're losing birds and, you know, all kinds of core species so these stories of what Santa Cruz County and San Benito County are doing to try to make it easier um, are heartening. And it reminds me of that book, Ministry of the Future. I don't know if you've ever read it by Kim Stanley Robinson. But um, in it, they talk about these massive wildlife corridors where they pretty much took out all the buildings and let them migrate, which I think we may have to do if we want to save big species you know, that migrate long distances, for example. But this is a start, perhaps, in the future of uh, wildlife preservation. The Land Trust of Santa Cruz County is one of many land trusts, um, and I don't know if they link up and talk to each other. There's one in Monterey County. Are you all in cahoots, like trying to preserve big swaths that cross county lines? Absolutely, right? And so the San Vicente Redwoods is an example of that. There are four land trusts involved. Um, but yeah, we have a California Council of Land Trusts, and so we're all communicating with one another, um, and we try to empower each other, and we learn lessons from one another. And so one of the things that I'm excited about this act is that, you know, wouldn't it be amazing if after we had this measure and we were investing local dollars in conserving our lands, um, wouldn't it be amazing if Monterey County then thought that that was an amazing idea and they had one as well? And then we could have uh, a, a bi-county investment that could really make the Pajaro River work so much more powerful because on one side is Santa Cruz County, on the other side is Monterey County, and that we, sh we should really be working together. The nonprofits do work together, um, but our, our, our government should, should be working together more, and our, our, our investment of public resources should uh, be better aligned and better coordinated. 
It really shows how, you know, these inventions called counties are just human inventions to try to organize ourselves and provide services, but they didn't recognize the bioregions or, you know, ecosystems or habitat or any of the things that nature decides it's connected by, like rivers and oceans and estuaries and things that they just sort of cut across with the county uh, drawing a line where it goes. So it's a great tool that you're describing to kind of circumvent or overlay on top of these artificial boundaries some more natural boundaries that make more sense to the the way rivers work because they wobble back and forth. They don't stay on one side of the county line or another. When they flood, they probably flood wherever there's a weak point in the levee, right? Not doesn't matter which county is on which side. So we just have a few more minutes. Just final thoughts on this measure. Um, again, it's a long title. Is it? Are you going to have an acronym for it or shortened name? We've been calling it the Water and Wildfire Protection Act. Um, and you can visit us on the web at SCC for Water and Wildfire Protection dot org. And I encourage your listeners to go to the website and find out everything that they can. Um, It really is um, a a critically important thing, a way of investing in uh, the long-term health of our lands and our community. Um, And it will, when it passes, it will be really transformational for a lot of the organizations that are really working on the ground. Thank you so much. That's Sarah Newkirk. She is the Executive Director of the Land Trust of Santa Cruz County. Thank you for coming in. Thank you, Rachel. I'm Rachel Ann Goodman. Thank you for listening. And coming up next, it's Gary Shapiro with From the Bookshelf, and that will be preceded by First Person Singular. This is KSQD Santa Cruz, 90.7 FM, and KSQT Prunedale, 89.7 FM.